the Space Research Institute at the Russian Academy of Sciences recently published a series of photographs taken by the Venera probe over 30 years ago on the surface of our closest neighbor, Venus. The photos, according to Leonid Ksanformaliti, present evidence of living organisms upon Venus, one of the most inhospitable places for human life in the solar system. The second planet from the Sun, it's believed to have once been Earth-like, although the constant temperature there now is around 480 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, even hotter than Mercury, which is tremendously closer to our Sun. According to Xan Formaliti, who is Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Science for the Institute of Space Research, the images reveal the movement of extremely strange objects on the surface of Venus. Predictably, NASA, along with many other institutes of research, have attempted to debunk his discovery, stating that the objects are nothing more than a lens cap and noise generated by the second-hand pictures, claiming that some of the objects are not present in the original images. Xan Formaliti believes that in the images, a scorpion-shaped creature, a disc-shaped object, and a black object are visible moving in front of the onboard camera of the Venera 13. Quoting Kassan Formaliti in an article for the Russian journal Solar System Research magazine, they all just emerge, fluctuate, and then disappear. What if we forget about the currently held theory regarding the non-existence of life on Venus and boldly suggest that these objects, these morphological features captured within these images could allow us to say that they are indeed living, end quote. Scientists have not ruled out that once, in the very distant past, Venus might have supported life in a time when the planet had giant oceans before the greenhouse effect created the temperatures that rule over the planet today. However, they firmly refute the possibility of living creatures alive on the planet's surface today. As Ivan, writer over at Ancient Origins, eloquently put it, the problem with science and scholars in search for extraterrestrial life is that mankind believes that for life to exist elsewhere in the solar system or universe, a planet should have similar climate and conditions to those of Earth." End quote. In support of his argument and in staunch defiance of the rigidly held views upon the environment needed to sustain life, a reality discovered in 1977. Hydrothermal vents deep within our oceans which belch steam from deep within the Earth's mantle, have temperatures just as hot as the surface of Venus. They are also home to countless, previously thought impossible, creatures, showing humans, especially the skeptics, that anything is possible. Our moon. A strange thing, don't you think? Have you ever gazed upon a full moon and wondered, wondered how it got there? What strange forces could have possibly built it? There are many moons within our solar system, yet few are as strange as ours. No others are known to ring like a bell when struck. No others possess such luminosity as our moon. In the 1970s, Michael Vassin and Alexander Shcherbakov of what was then the Soviet Academy of Sciences created a thesis that the Moon is actually the remnants of a very ancient spaceship, created by, as yet, unknown civilization. The article was entitled, Is the Moon the Creation of Alien Intelligence?, and was published in Sputnik, the Soviet equivalent of Reader's Digest. The suggestion of a hollow moon first appeared in science fiction when H. G. Wells wrote about a hollow moon in his 1901 book, The First Men in the Moon. Michael Vassin and Alexander Shcherbakov's hypothesis is based on the fact that large lunar craters, generally assumed to be formed from massive meteor impacts, are generally too shallow for scars made upon an organic body, and can have flat or even convex bottoms. They propose that small meteors are making cup-shaped depressions in the rocky surface of the moon, while the larger meteors are drilling through a rocky upper layer, hitting an armored hull underneath. Does George Lucas know something we don't? It seems he couldn't resist adding just one crater. The authors referenced earlier speculations by astrophysicist Iosif Shklovsky, who suggested that the Martian moon Phobos was an artificial satellite and hollow. Interestingly, Phobos has been claimed to appear to be hollow by numerous astronomers, 
who have stated that it appears to have an opening on one side, making it, in a sense, similar in shape to an empty shell. Phobos's orbit is also a complete mystery. Many who have researched it claim that it should have crashed into the surface of Mars many moons ago. Between 1972 and 1977, seismometers installed on our moon by the Apollo missions recorded strange moonquakes. The moon was described to have been ringing like a bell during some of those quakes. The supportive evidence was then brought to popular attention in March 1970 in an article in Popular Science. When Apollo 12 deliberately crashed the ascent stage of its lunar module into the moon's surface, it was claimed that the moon rang like a bell for an hour, leading to arguments that it must be hollow. Several YouTubers, most notably Crow777, have supposedly recorded what is now known as lunar waves. If confirmed to exist, this may prove there is some form of functioning shield or scanning system being seen working on its surface. The fact that the moon is less dense than the Earth is also strong supportive evidence that it is indeed hollow. The Nazca Lines, unquestionably one of the most enigmatic ancient sites on Earth. Enormous ancient artworks that since their modern discovery, a number of individuals have attempted to, and seemingly failed to, adequately explain. Created to such enormous scale, many of these theories put forward demanded the utilization of advanced ancient flying machines just to enable their full appreciation. However, what many are not aware of is another particularly baffling structure that litters Nazca. Known as pokeos, they are stone structures which corkscrew deep into the ground, each connected to a channel of groundwater far below the surface. It must be noted, for many millennia, the ancient sites these mysterious structures connected, and indeed the locations in which they are found within, have endured brutal episodes of drought, and for any ancient civilization to have flourished here, would have required tremendous skills and ingenious solutions. And the Paquillos could undoubtedly be perceived as striking examples of this, displaying this ancient group's high level of intelligence. Not only that, but we feel strong indication of a civilization who had drastically more capability and technology at their disposal than that of the Incas. And although modern academia attempt to discreetly shrug off such astonishing works of ancient genius with the simple term pre-Incan, we believe that these pre-Incans they speak of were once part of a civilization far in advance of anything funded individuals will ever willingly admit to. As explained by Rosa La Sapinara of the Institute of Methodologies for Environmental Analysis, satellite imagery has discovered a remarkable past function to these once mysterious spiral holes. They have realized that they were an ancient complex hydraulic system designed to extract and move groundwater over tremendous distances beneath the arid landscape above them. According to La Sapinara, examining satellite images has allowed scientists to analyze the movement of pumped water throughout the desert. Quote, All holes were interconnected via a system of tunnels, similar to modern subways. Each spiral hole appears to serve the function of a pump, filling the tunnels with air and directing the water to a specific location. In this way, water flowed to ancient settlements from where it was most desired, from areas of abundance." End quote. It seems that scientists have been forced to reluctantly admit, due to the overwhelming evidence of the system's sophistication, that the original engineer's know-how and workmanship was of such high quality that not only does it rival modern water delivery systems, but even after several millennia, many of the Paquillos still function perfectly. Furthermore, to have initially built them, the builders required as yet undiscovered advanced equipment, such as air pumping technologies. Mechanisms far out of the realms of any academically studied ancestor. They also required an intimate understanding of geology, many meters below their feet. And indeed, the understanding of how they were going to manipulate 
future movement of the groundwater below. Also, intriguingly, many parts of these tunnels successfully pass through tectonic faults as if they had prior advanced knowledge of these also. We personally find this discovery of the Pakeo's past function as nothing short of miraculous, making them some of the strongest evidence for not only a highly advanced pre-Incan culture, but of a technologically developed ancient people with in-depth knowledge of geology, hydrology, and many other seemingly modern understandings, developed through the utilization of advanced, technologically accomplished study. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling.